Hey guys, welcome to my Mithril.js tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you the basics of Mithril.js. I will be showing you how Mithril.js components work. Then I'll create another video to show you how Mithril works with routing. And also I'll create another video to show you how the Mithril HTTP client um, function works as well. So without any delay, let me just quickly introduce to you what Mithril.js is. Mithril.js is a client side JavaScript framework, right? And it allows you to create single page applications. And if you want to, you could integrate it into any other application. Just simply give it the DOM reference that you'd like to place your Mithril functionality to working and voila, it works. You can do that by either importing it into your node modules, or you could quite simply just slap in a CDN, which is actually what I've done right here. You see that right there. I've created my, my script source with the HTTP CDN link as well, link into Mithril. And I've also created my div ID of app to inject my Mithril functionality in there. Now, if some of you are familiar with React, some of you would know that react.dom.render would basically take in two arguments, which is the actual elements of document.getElementById app, and then you pass in your app component, right? Right, um, like this actually, sorry, like this. Right, now in Mithril, it's a bit different. You just simply pass in the component and instead of React DOM dot render, you do M dot mount. And what you're basically saying is, okay, I would like to mount into this app element ID. I'd like to mount my app component. Now there are three ways to create a component in Mithril. You could either use an object literal or alternatively you could use a function or you could use a class. For the purpose of this example, we will be using functions. Now, um, how we create components in React and Mithril are somewhat similar but different at the same time, and I'll show you. In React, you'd create your function here. So you'd say, okay, const app component, sorry, not const app, sorry, function app component, and then you'd return the HTML or the JSX, basically, right? And then you would have your prop your state, right? So you could say, okay, um, here's my destructuring of um, my value of name, right? And I, and I'm, when I, whenever I run you state, it returns two elements in an array, which I'm destructuring here. So name would be the first one, which is holding the value over here and then i have a method here called set name which allows me to change the name right and then in here i'll then say okay on click uh, then i would say okay maybe slap an arrow function in there and then say set name right john doe so i could do that right or what i could do even i could just say okay run this method change name and inside change name right i'll just do function change name and then i could just say okay set name john doe and the name would be changed now with mithril it's slightly different in the sense that number one i just simply create an object called model and i have a property in there called name that's number one Number two, I don't return any JSX. I would actually be returning an object that contains a property called view. Let's just tidy this up. And that property view is like your equivalent of the render function in React classes, React class components. Now I'm going to create a function here called view. And let me just shift this up here as well. And I'll show you the Mithril way of doing that. But here we are, we have function view and this returns an M function. Now the M function takes three arguments. The first argument is the selector. So in this case, I'd say, okay, I want to create a div class. 
The second argument would be a key value pair set of attributes such as like class being, I don't know, I want to give this a class of app, right? And then the third argument would be the text content or the nested mithril um, functions as well that return the DOM ultimately. So for now, I'm going to just use back ticks. I'm just going to say hello model.name, right? And here the name is world. So if I do a quick refresh in here, you see hello world. And if we take a look inside here, what do you see? You see my div component. So you see my div element with a class of app, just as I mentioned in here. Now, in terms of changing name, you see this function here, just as we would do in React, it's a bit different. We just explicitly write it out. So you'd say model.name equals John Doe. Now remember that we had an onClick event on the actual DOM element itself in React. Well, in here, you'd simply just write on click like this. And then what you could then do is create a function here called on click. And then you would simply just say model.name equals John Doe. Or I could just say, okay, I want to invoke the change name function, basically. So if you actually do take a look on here, when I when I when I click on this, look what happens. Voila, hello, John Doe. And that's already been done. Pretty slick, pretty smooth, but just for the sake of making it a bit quicker, I'll just say, okay, on click, when I click on when I click on this element, I want to quickly throw an array. Um, not an array, sorry, I want to create an arrow function and invoke change name um, function. And did you see again, it does the same thing. So it's totally fine. Now, if I wanted to go further and start nesting other um, components, for example, I could do that by simply just running the M, invoking the M function again. And then I could create a component called user component, right? And if I wanted to pass in props like I would with Angular or React, I'd, you know, I'd simply just pass an object that will contain the name of the person and that name would be model.name. There we are. So what we're going to do quickly now is we're going to create a user function, sorry, a user component. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a second, I'm going to show you the, the, the another way of creating a component in Mithril and that's by using the object literal. So const user component is an object literal. Okay. And in that object literal, I have view, right? View method, which again, like this returns an M object and I'm going to, an M function. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an, uh, a div tag with a class of user, right? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I'm going to add a property in here called, I'm going to add a property in here called on click, right? And I'm going to say, okay, arrow function invoke. So not even arrow function, sorry, my bad. I'm going to, I'm going to invoke this property here called this dot on click as well. And then I'll just create the back ticks here and say hello and whatever the name is in here. Now, the question is, since I'm passing in the name as a prop, how do I gain access to that in my user component? Quite simply put, I'll just add a, I'll just basically pull out the attribute from what we call vNode. vNode is the virtual node for this component. And I'm going to do a quick console log of vNode so that you can actually see what vNode consists of. And for the name here, I'm just going to say hello world. So if we just have a quick look, you see hello world in here. If you actually take a look inside, you see that I have a class called app and I also have a class called user which is basically coming from here dot user now 
the hello world bit you see this right here but most importantly look at this v node v node consists of a property called attrs which means attribute that i'm passing in and there we are name world so what i'm going to do is i'm going to extract the attributes here and i'm going to say okay hello attrs.name and now if i refresh this you're going to see hello world again but what i want to do is i want to invoke or i want to change the name world in my parent component so this is where you have the child and parent component speaking so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pass in a function into my user component so that my user can component so that my user component can then change the name at, at the parent level so i do this like react you know you pass down a prop as a function so that your child components can then alter the names for example but in this example i'll show you how you do it in mithril so you just pass in a function with the key of um, let's let's call it on change name right and on change name is going to be a function as well in here so i'll just do this on change name right now that is going to retrieve that's going to be that's going to receive the name and we're just going to do a quick console.log of name right and if i just quickly go into attrs again you're going to see that it is a function that it is being that is being passed in can you see that there so name is an attribute and on change name is also an attribute this is app.js line three line three is over here so it's logging this out and this is what i'm passing in in here so to make it maybe a bit presentable there we are that's my component user component and i'm passing in the name prop and i'm passing in the on change name prop as well which is simply this function so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say okay um when i click on this i want to invoke a ttrs dot on change name i'm going to change the name to james doe okay now let's see what happens when i invoke that method okay is it going to log the name that i've passed let's see so when i click on this james doe is up here and all i need to do in my app component is this model.name equals name so when i refresh this and i click on this you're going to see the name change to james though in fact in fact let me remove this key value pair right here and what we're going to see here is number one i've got a div tag and in under that div tag i have a user component and in that user component, I'm passing down some props, I'm passing down the name, and I'm passing down the unchanged name function as well, which will be invoked. So let's just quickly just tidy up and get rid of this and just do a quick refresh. Now, when I click on this, the name should change to James Doe. And voila, done. So that's how components actually work in Mithril JS. So I hope you found this useful. In the next tutorial, I'll probably dive a, bit, dive a bit deeper into how you can render components. But in the meantime, please stay tuned and I will show you how components actually work at a deeper level and also how the routing system works as well as the HTTP client library as well, or shall I say the function of Mithril as well that it brings. Take care.